Why was the Princess of Wales labelled a disappointment? What will be happening at Balmoral this summer? And will the latest Prince Andrew headlines stop his plans for a return to public life? We'll be tackling all those questions and more. Hello and welcome to Palace Confidential. I'm Joe Elvin and here to discuss the week's big royal stories are the Daily Mail's royal editor Rebecca English and in a glorious return to the show the Mail on Sunday's editor-at-large Charlotte Griffiths. Welcome to you both and just a quick reminder that if you like royal videos featuring the finest experts like these two make sure you subscribe to our channel and never miss another episode of Palace Confidential again. Why would you risk that? Now Rebecca I'm going to come to you first this morning. Let's start with a story written by a friend of the show Kate Manzi who reports that now the excitement of the coronation has settled down a bit, we're in for some more royal tours. We are. I think from September I'm probably going to be living out my living out my suitcase. Well, that's exciting. Where are um, you going? Well, I can't tell you everywhere oh, God, because it hasn't she's been announced. Such a buzz kill. I know, she's such a tease. See, I mean, the reason it's worth it's worth highlighting the reason why we haven't seen a lot of these big royal trips, apart from obviously the state visit to Germany, is because of the death of Queen Elizabeth and the coronation. The, the courtiers basically had to rip up all their plans, including for a lot of big overseas visits, and go back to the drawing board because everyone had moved around in different positions. Um, so a lot of that will be kick-starting in September we've got what we can say is that we've got Prince William going to New York to launch Earthshot and then he'll be going to Singapore but this time with uh, Princess of Wales for the actual Earthshot finals um, I know the King and the Queen have got two trips coming up now I would probably be killed if I told you where they were but if you happen to look We're online, willing to risk that, Rebecca. Come on. <laughs> if you happen to look online you might read somewhere that they might be visiting Kenya and I wouldn't be able to tell you that wasn't true. And so, is Kenya nice in September? Do we know? Uh, I don't know actually, but it'll be a really poignant trip because, of course, Queen Elizabeth found out in Kenya that her late mm. father had died and that um, she was now queen. So I can imagine there'll be a, an element of poignancy to that trip. So mm. yeah, the big trips are starting again. You know, going out, selling Great Britain PLC. I'm going to put in my request right now that Rebecca does a special Palace Confidential where she shows what she packs for a royal tour and how you do it and how you live out of that royal tour suitcase. Actually, you know what? I'm the worst pack. It's an it's actual joke with the palace and all the rest of the team that I take more shoes with me than any member of the royal family. <laughs> there you go. TV <laughs> gold. We need it. We need it. Now, Charlotte, some royal watchers will note that the family isn't particularly mobile. The king, king and queen are, you know, no spring chickens and the Waleses have young children. Well, yeah, I think I was looking at Camilla yesterday. She was in Norfolk with you and she does move quite slowly, but I wouldn't say that she's not mobile but she is she's 76 and I know that they do factor in rest breaks for her um, on royal tours so that she can actually read and just chill for sort of 20 minutes here and there oh 20 minutes yeah 20 minutes Spoiling. Um, I think she actually did that during you know that period of time after the Queen died they were actually factoring in little breaks for her during the day here and there um, but to say she's not mobile I think might be a bit unfair I mean she's you know she's she's still going strong at 76 and as for the Wales is well their kids are in a boarding school but they don't actually board yet you know they're still quite little George is only 10 so I think Kate will nip out but probably won't stay for much longer than two or three maybe four or five days at a time because as we all know she puts her kids first mm. she never wants to disrupt their school term and she just wants to be with them and have make sure they have as normal a life as possible and not not do what what Charles had to live through when he was a little boy, which was not seeing his mum for six months at a time because she jetted off to God knows where. It's incredible to think that the tours used to be so long. What, what do you think's changed about that? Well, yeah, when I started doing this job too many years ago now to count, I mean, these trips were long. We were away for a good two weeks, sometimes three or even four, if it was uh, places like Australia and New Zealand, which, you know, as a mum with young children, personally, was, was really difficult for me. But they're a really important part of the job, and that has definitely changed over the years. And that's partly because the king and queen are, are now older and as you rightly say the Waleses have young children so what they're trying to focus on is doing these trips you know between five and seven days you know particularly the Waleses can go out on a trip on a Monday and be back in time to pick up the school kids from school on a, on a Friday that's really important to them mm. and I think actually given 
you know, the way the late Queen had to balance her royal role with her children. Um, you know, some of that turned out well, some of that not so well. Yeah, but arguably, the, she yeah. didn't do a very good job of finding that balance because well, Charles I mean, was deeply affected by being separated from her. Well, he her. certainly was, yeah, and he used to speak about the closeness of the bond with his own grandmother because mm. his mother was often mm. away working. Um, so I think that's probably a good thing for them to do. And, you know, I don't think us as journalists, you know, complain because it does make it more manageable. Mm. And more affordable. More affordable. And also, they can still pack a punch. I mean, I genuinely have known, never known anyone that works as hard as the king. You know, when we're on these royal tours, he will pack in 10, sometimes 12 engagements in a day, a fraction of which you'll only ever read in the paper because we just don't have room for it. But he famously never stops for lunch and no one else is allowed to stop for lunch too. He keeps going. So, you know, he was, you won't see what he's achieving lesson, but he'll just, they'll, they'll work, it, work it out in a different way. With travel though, Rebecca, you didn't have to go far at all this week to follow the royals, did you? What, what have you been up to? So I went to Norfolk uh, with the Lovely. King and the Queen because uh, they were visiting the 140th Sandringham Flower Show, which is always the Sandringham Flower Show is the last joint engagement they do before they go up to Balmoral for the summer. So it has a really nice kind of end of term feel about it and everyone's kind of quite demob happy. And there was a, a really funny moment where we're in this tent where the kind of amateur produce uh, growers and bakers display their goods. And I spotted this incredible pie in the shape of the king's I, face I with I a crown on, your on it. Yeah, and um, I kind of stood by it, and the kind of queen came up and was like, "Oh, what are you looking at?" So I rather like, you know, this this pie of uh, here, and she was like, "I mean, she's she's got a great sense of humour." She went, "That looks just like my husband," <laughs> and then she went to get the king, and she brought him back, and she was quite mischievous. She went, "Oh, there's this really nice pastry for you to see." <laughs> so he didn't know what he was going to see, but he's got a good sense of humour. I mean, he's seen some weird and wonderful things over the years, so uh, he laughed and kind of remarked that it made him look a bit like a Wallace and Gromit character. So it, it was good fun. <laughs> I watched your video and she did sort of approach him with caution, I felt, and then everyone was sort of on tenterhooks waiting for his reaction and then relief when he found it funny. When he goodness. laughed. Because they did have quite big laugh. ears. Yeah, it would have been quite a, kind of a rather, rather interesting teeth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think that's where the Wallace and Gromit thing comes from. But I've seen them on tour like, over the years where they've been like given portraits that clearly look nothing like them and they've obviously said oh wonderful you know they, they've got great poker faces um apart from queen elizabeth when she went to germany and she was given i think it was by i think it was by the president of the prime minister they were, she was given a portrait and she clearly found it hideous and just couldn't hide it at all and it was one of those moments everyone's standing around rather awkwardly and she's just like Hmm. Now, Charlotte, that's the last big engagement, as Rebecca says, before the family head off for their summer holidays. Um, do you think they'll all be heading once more to Balmoral? Yeah, I think they're all going to gradually go over the summer. And the Queen famously went from August right through till October. And I think uh, Charles is going to do the same thing um, and generally be on the estate of Balmoral for that whole time with people coming in dribs and drabs. And then they often uh, pose for a photo during that time with all the grandchildren because the Queen used to have the grandchildren stay towards the end of August. And then that photo eventually gets released later in the year occasionally. So um, Rebecca and I were talking earlier about whether or not we might see a really nice portrait around November, which is the King's birthday, am I right? 75th, yeah. yeah. And um, whether we might, might see a nice portrait of them all at Balmoral, all the grandchildren together. Um, and they just have a really nice family time when they're there, I think. Oh, do we think that that that's one of many family traditions they might keep alive in this new reign. Well, I'm actually writing a feature for the Daily Mail on this on Saturday, so it's oh, worth let's look out keeping for that, an out, eye yes. out for it. So I won't say too much. Um, and I think this summer's going to be... The best way to describe it is the same but different. So you will see the kind of... the familiar things that the family enjoy, uh, the walks, the riding, the mushroom picking, that's stalking. quite popular. Stalking. Stalking. Yeah, possibly stalking, you know, uh, the picnics, the barbecues. Um, what, Glorious 12th? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, they do like the shooting. Yeah, um, it's but the start of the shooting season. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay yes. Yeah. Thank you for explaining yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but there, there'll be notable things that are different as well, which hopefully you'll be reading about this weekend. Oh, we'll look forward to that. And uh, Charlotte, I imagine that it is occasions like this, the start of the Balmoral holiday, where the Queen will be really missed the most. I think so, because it's when the Queen would sort of put on her 
low-key clothes, put on her two-bar heating thing that she used to have by the fireplace and just like, really kick back and relax and be sort of herself, just truly, truly herself. And that was her famous thing that she'd do for three months. And so I think the true nature of the Queen will probably be quite missed in that scenario without her pottering around being just like a sort of granny for the, those later years of her life. There's a great story by one of her bodyguards um, that he's told, but it, it's, it's worth retelling that she is so relaxed and so comfortable there that they were walking out in the countryside once and some tourists came across them and basically said, oh, do you know, this is, you know, the Queen's estate, or do you ever see her when you're walking around here? And the Queen very quickly said, oh, I've never met her, but this guy next to me yeah. has. <laughs> Not quite alive. And, 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 yeah, and, yeah. And, he, and he made a kind of slightly sarcastic comment about what, what the Queen could be like as a boss. And the people just went away, none the wiser, mm. never realising that it was the Queen, because she was just so relaxed there, you know, in her little twin set and her tweed and her trousers yomping mm. through the highlands. Driving the so. Land Rover around. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if Charles will be like that. I think Charles will be sort of relaxed in the Balmoral context and try and keep that going. Oh, they love it. He genuinely loves it up there. Yeah. Well, stick around towards the end of the show because we'll be having some great pictures and memories of that Balmoral time and plus the new controversy over comments made about the Princess of Wales. But before that, we want to hear from you. And we've got some of your comments this week which come from... All of our, all the comments come from our American viewers. Our first is about the report that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex asked President Biden for a lift to America on Air Force One, like it's an Uber. Donna Jones was shocked by this. She writes, I'm American, but could never imagine anyone thinking they could dream of asking to hitch a ride on Air Force One. What? The nerve, the audacity, the arrogance. Donna could get a job writing our headlines, I think. Uh, meanwhile, Shell Bell is not convinced by the Duchess of Sussex's own political ambitions. She says Meghan doesn't have any political chances here in the US. I laughed out loud at that. Come on. Well, Shell, I think you could argue that stranger things have happened. And finally, after our debate on whether Daniel Craig and Rachel Weisz should have stood when meeting the Princess of Wales at Wimbledon, Charles Taylor says that he cannot imagine what was going on there. He says that personally I would rise if any lady approached me and my party to engage in conversation, however brief. I realise such conventions are now considered antiquated, but I hear many people say they miss the courteous behaviours that used to come naturally to anyone in polite society. Quite, quite, quite. Please do keep those comments coming in from wherever you are in the world. We're going to start this section now by sticking with the Princess of Wales. Well, social media lit up earlier this week with righteous fury after Catherine was labelled a disappointment by a leading fashion writer. Speaking to a podcast, the ex-Vogue fashion editor Susie Menke said the Princess of Wales is a bit of a disappointment about jewellery. She gives the impression that she only puts it on when she absolutely has to. Rebecca, what did you make of this? A disappointment, is that a bit strong? Yeah, I was quite surprised by these comments. I don't know about you. I thought they were a bit harsh. I really like the way uh, Catherine mixes up those kind of high street, those £15 accessorised buys she gets with the really priceless gems that they've got hidden away in the vaults at, at Buckingham Palace. I think that's quite relatable. So mm. I think to criticise her that for that was, was pretty unfair. I mean, she's notoriously, Charlotte, always really mixed up high end, low end, hasn't she? Yeah, always. And she uses her jewellery as a chance to expose little known brands to her celebrity. So she's made a lot of brands famous by wearing some random pair of earrings that we've never heard of before, and then they instantly sell off the shelves. And then, you know, what does Susie expect us to be doing, sort of washing up in her marigolds with, like, sort of diamonds hanging out of her ears from the royal collection, you oh, know? I think I would if I was royal. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know marigolds. you would. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, don't think, Joe, I yeah. know you would. But I think that's a really good point, Charlotte. There was a, there's a company um, in Wales called Spells of Love that I've been in touch with over the years. And when um, Catherine went on an early visit to Wales, she wore one of those her pairs of earrings. And the, the owner of this little company had no idea that she was going to do it. And suddenly, you know, her, her website started to go into overdrive. And, you know, these earrings were selling out as, as fast as they could yeah, restock changes them. changes their lives, these and, designers. And she, she emailed me and said, thank you so much for featuring it, because you don't know what that means wow. to mm. a little business like me. It has literally changed the profile of my business. Amazing. You know, my little Welsh business is now 
a recognised global business. And I think, you know, wearing the grand jewels is, is great and it's fun and they're amazing, but you lose to do that all yeah. the time, you lose little things like that at your peril. And I think she should be sparing as well, because when the Princess of Wales has to dazzle for, say, a state occasion, she needs to dazzle with sort of big jewels on. And if she's sparing about how often she does that, then, you know, it makes it more impactful when she does, I think. 100%. It's so interesting, isn't it? It must be incredible to have to walk out of the front door knowing that everybody has in the world has an opinion on what you're wearing at any given time. That's That's the... The lot of the princess, isn't it? Yeah, but I, this is why I think she shows quite strength of character. That I don't think she's ever been swayed by that at all. Mm. That she's worn what she feels comfortable and what she feels elegant in. And yeah, we have seen her style change. You know, do you remember all those Zara restresses that mm. she first wore, meeting the Obamas and and those early engagements? Um, and we have definitely seen a change in She's that. gone more upmarket. Uh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, you'll spot that more than I think any of us, Joe, given your kind of fashion editor experience. I think, you know, we've, we've definitely seen that. But I think she's done it at her own pace. Yeah. Um, and maybe the way the clothes have got grander, but the jewellery is a way to just keep it a bit more real. Do you think Susie, I don't, I'm doubtful that Susie meant it as some sort of like grave dig and more. As a fashion editor, we just like to see pretty things all the time. And I, th I think it was more like a tongue in cheek. Oh, I just want to see the. But she said that finery. Kate doesn't have joy in her heart when she wears this big, you know, big, fashionable, amazing jewellery. But I think she probably does have joy. I think she always looks a bit kind of pleased to be wearing this stuff when she does get a chance to wear it. So I slightly disagree with her there. Mm. Yeah, how do you show joy? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. And yeah. if Kate wore yeah. too much bling, wheels, we'd probably end up criticising her for being too bling and going to Meghan Markle, dare I say it, and spending far too much on her outfits every day because she's got to find that balance where she's still a princess of the people at the same time. And that's where we come up with this. People always saying that she's recycling outfits when she's just doing oh, the normal thing that, that people wear with clothes. <laughs> you just wear your outfits more than, more than once. More than once. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is a very old dress I'm wearing. I'm not recycling it. I'm just wearing something that's in my wardrobe. I remember the last time I didn't wear this dress, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, if, if you are interested in anything that any of the panelists are wearing today, you can find the links for those below. But let's move on, Charlotte. I want to talk about a story uh, written by a certain Richard Eden, who is on holiday this week, but Edenites fear not he'll be back next week but he's revealed that a famous portrait of the now princess of wales is no longer on display yeah he dropped his bomb and then scuttled off on holiday <laughs> um, but it's quite a mischievous piece because what richard eden's saying is that this very important piece uh, of the princess of wales her first solo portrait is no longer on display and that she may not have objected to it going into the archives. Oh, really? And, and I think that's probably true. I mean, I suppose if she really wants to put her foot down and say, no, I love that portrait, keep it on the wall, she, she might have done. It doesn't seem like that's her personality to me. Is it something that she would be involved in at all? I think they probably would have consulted her, and that's what Rich Eden says in his piece. They would have let her know. Um, but she's not the kind of person that would say, take it down or keep it up, or one way or the other, I don't think. But um, also, I don't see what's so wrong about this piece. I think she looks kind of... Elegant and, dare I say, sexy. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> what do you think? She looks really cool. It got quite a mixed reaction when it came out that it looked a bit grey and a bit miserable, didn't it? It's sort of her in 20 years, yeah. which is maybe a bit unflattering. And they do. I mean, I've been to the National Portrait Gallery with her quite a lot. They do chop and change these things. Things go into archives. They come back out again because they have so many paintings that they want people to see. Um, she And also, I, the one thing about her is she's not... She's not very, she's not enthusiastic about bigging herself up. So, for example, when she, it took a lot of persuading, I know, for her when she did that Vogue cover shoot. Do you remember it? And she was very, I know from speaking to people, she was very keen on that, not to be appearing in a studio draped with jewels, with a reference back to our mm. earlier conversation in, in ball gowns. She wanted to be in Norfolk in country clothes. It's where she feels comfortable. So she's not, she's not overly keen in pushing herself that way. So I can't mm. imagine her ever being the kind of person that would 
demand that their portrait be on display anywhere. Mm. But hilariously, you can still see this portrait. You can turn up at the gallery, uh, write, write to the gallery and ask to see it, and they'll take you down. To oh, the you have to write. Seat. I was going to say, really? should we go after this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah just demand hope, to see it. I hope not too many people, having read, watched this and read the article in the mail, um, will do it, because it's going to be a lot of admin for the National well, Portrait Gallery. Well, I mean, if gallery. it's viewers watching this, if they all do it, there'll be millions. millions. They'll be inundated. Yeah. They'll just have to go up overnight. <laughs> Sorry, Catherine. Uh, now, let's move on. Rebecca, to Prince Andrew now. Um, and court documents have cast, believe it or not, <laughs> even more questions about the Duke's relationship with the disgraced financier, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole kind of spider's web of cases still going on in the US around Epstein. And uncomfortably for the Duke of York, his name keeps on popping up. And there have been further uh, evidence supplied in one of these court cases that uh, Jeffrey Epstein arranged for a meeting at Buckingham Palace between the Duke and uh, the boss of uh, a US bank in 2013, which was obviously three years after he said he had had anything to do with Epstein anymore, that that infamous meeting in New York, he oh went to tell him, because he was a man of honour, that he could never see or speak to him again. And it, it's just more uncomfortableness, isn't it? Oh, yes. I'm feeling very uncomfortable even just thinking about all that right now. But this is this drip, drip, Charlotte, of unfavourable headlines. It's really not going to help this desire that we know of that he wants to get back to work and back to public life. No, it's really not. I mean, I think this latest batch um, of documents are really damaging. I mean, I can't see a, I just can't see how he could possibly go back into a royal life after after this. Has he made any comment on this so far? He hasn't. And no. in fact, all of these recent revelations we've seen, obviously responsibly, the newspapers such as the mail, will contact his office and ask if they want to say, and then we've been nothing back. So. Mm. What can he do? He's been caught out telling a barefaced lie if the documents are to be believed. What is it the kids say? Orcs. <laughs> Orcs. Let's move on to happier topics now. And as promised, some more pictures of Balmoral. That's right, it's montage time, and today we're taking you to Scotland. Beautiful Balmoral there. Definitely one to consider for a summer holiday. I wonder if we could get an invite. Rebecca could get us an invite. Sure, My thanks to Rebecca and to Charlotte and to you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.